Hi, everyone. My name is Philip Ducham. I'm a senior producer on Dead Space. With me here today is Raman campos Oriera, the creative director on the project. Hello, everyone. Did you forget, Raman? Toujours. All right, let's get started. Uh, so what we're about to do today is a bit unorthodox for us at EA. Um, we're going to give you, with this live stream, a first look at some very early, and I'll say very, very early footage. Very, very, very early. <laughs> footage from the game. Um, but we wanted to do this because we want to be open with the communication and open about how we're tackling this game. However, I want to be clear, this is not a gameplay reveal. We're not going to be showcasing very long sections of the game or, the ch or one full chapters. We want to give you all an early look at the game that we're making to be able to see reactions across the community about the game that we're making. And there's two reasons why we want to do that. First, at Motives, one thing that, we, that really is important for us is that we want to create a game that excites players. Um, and I think that SARS Quadrants was actually a great example of this. It came from uh, the, the nostalgia that the team had over the X-Wing versus TIE Fighter franchise, and it carried through in the experience that they created. And it's a little bit what we want to do for Dead Space. Um, we see this project, and we want to make sure that we're honoring the legacy, that we stay true to the source, true to the original. And for us, the best way to do that is to engage with the community early on to be able to give you first look inside, like behind the curtain, and see the game that we're making and, and be able to think, uh, to see how we're tackling it. And we've actually been doing this since the very beginning of the project. Um, we got in contact during the conception phase with the community council that we created, some hardcore Dead Space fans that remain active even after years um, of inactivity for the Dead Space, Dead Space franchise. And with this community council, we've established a relationship where we gave them first look at uh, some of the executive presentations that we were making with an EA, uh, some of the creative brief game design documents, first playable footage of the game, and in exchange, we asked them brutal feedback. Like, what are we making? Is it good? Is it what fans expect out of this remake? Where does it suck? <laughs> Where does it suck, like, most importantly? And, and for this live stream today, we're actually thrilled to have two of the community council members with us uh, joining us. So uh, we have Jackie Butler and Khalif Adams joining us for this live stream. Hello, Jackie. Hi, Khalif. Oh, How are you? Oh, my Hi, goodness. Hi, Phil. Hi, Roman. We're doing great. Very Hi. excited to be here. Excited to see Great. you both, seeing that you're all hanging out in Montreal, looking good. I see they got you all made up, looking cute. I love it. I appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, I'm Kali I'm Adams, one of the hosts of, or the host of the Spawn on Me podcast. I'm super excited to be here. I'm a huge Dead Space fan. I've been waiting for this for a very long time. And uh, I get to rock with one of my favorite content creators on the planet. Jackie, let the folks at home know a little bit more about you. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Jackie Butler. I'm a cardiac nurse extern, soon to be RN, as well as a streamer and content creator here on Twitch. Let me tell you, Khalif, Roman, Phil, one of uh, there's very few games that I wish I could experience for the first time again. One of those is obviously Dead Space. So I'm literally over the moon to be here. No uh, pun intended. You know what I'm saying? So let's get straight into it and talk about the Dead Space remake. All right, let's get started. So we're going to dive right in with the classic dark and claustrophobic headbanger hallway. Shown here on the screen is what Dead Space looked like in 2008. Although revolutionary for its time, let's see the design process and how it looks now. Roman and Phil, can you show us more? Yeah, so actually one of the first things that we did was um, we went back to the legacy assets for the game. Um, so we wanted to recreate with the proxies, uh, uh, the full ship, the Ishimura, to recreate it. And then our art team went in and started an added level of details uh, to the environment so that we could have a higher fidelity and start seeing um, what can the game look like on next generation of consoles. Um, so we went in, added details, then started working on the shaders and the materials to try to have that metallic look um, mm -hmm. that we, we were after and, and just like to get the right materials out of the environment. Um, from there, we did like a first pass at lighting to try to get the mood right, because the atmosphere of Dead Space is pretty much on lighting, and then on VFX uh, to try to get like that full picture of what are we after, what are we trying to achieve for the game. And it looks great on, on a few stills, but mm -hmm. it actually looks way better in game. So, so what type of engine like did you guys that. use to create this, and what graphics uh, are you using, aiming for? 
So uh, great question, Jackie. We're, we're using Frostbite as our dev engine, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we're we're going for obviously um, IN graphics, uh, IN fidelity, and, and our focus is on lighting, VFX, uh, and, and just overall audio experience to make sure that we would deliver the right atmosphere, something that was key in the original game. Yeah, so I know we have a real live functional build currently. Can you bring that up? And this again is a work in progress. So yes, that's super early. Like it's end of pre-production build. We are just starting production. So it's really, really, really far from, uh, from being done. But mm -hmm. one thing we really wanted and you touch about it, it's really wanted to make sure that we nail the ambience and not only the look, the mm -hmm. lighting, the VFX, the fog, but also nail that ambience, give you the feeling that you're in the Ishimura, you're inside those dark corridors. And not only it's in engine, it's actually in game. And here's my boy Isaac. So that rig, that armor, it's not the original, it's a new one, it's still <laughs> work in progress, it's going to be improved a lot, but it gives a first taste at Isaac Clark. In, in the remake. And uh, look, here we are. Wow. I mean, the lighting, everything looks phenomenal. The smoke. It looks this so is good. Very much what we should be expecting at this point from next generation graphics. It's really dead space, but like you never saw it, I think. Mm -hmm. So it has been almost 13 years, you know, since the original game came out, the original Dead Space. Why is this remake happening now, and what is what exactly is this remake? Can you elaborate on that? So, one thing that's important for us, and that's why it's for PS5, Xbox Series, or for or for PC, is that there is not. It's not about one thing. Like Dead Space is a super strong experience, mm -hmm. and so it's really about improving on a lot of different elements to create that, uh, that original but still new experience, whether it's the new lighting and retracing, whether, like Phil mentioned, it's about audio, whether it's improvements to gameplay and uh, having new ZRG, or as you're going to see maybe later, improvements and dismemberment mm -hmm. and how you actually deal damage to the enemies, whether it's about having an unbroken and continuous experience. It's about doing a lot of improvements and how we enrich that experience. And so that's really what that remake is, uh, is about. Yeah, because, you know, we have been looking at Reddit, we've been looking online, and there has been some people in the community noting that, you know, the game already stood the test of time. This is still considered to be, quote unquote, a perfect game. Exactly. And so, like, like we show, like I mentioned, what's, what's really important for us it's to capture that, uh, that original ambience, that original experience, but like you've never experienced before. And that's really the, the age we're, we're after, I believe. Yeah, and I mentioned it earlier, like we're, we wanna make sure that we're honoring the legacy. That's one of our production pillars that we have for the game. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we want to make it relevant for today. Like the games have evolved a lot mm -hmm. since the original Dead Space came out um, from obviously graphics, which is like the easiest uh, way to see how, uh, how it changed, uh, but also as far as but systems... Not easiest necessarily to make. Well, <laughs> no, not easiest to make, no, that's for sure. Uh, but, but as far as systems, as far uh, as just opportunities for gameplay um, and, and how to leverage it, that, that, that's something that uh, we think that given the evolution that Dead Space had within its own uh, franchise with Dead Space 2 and Dead Space 3, uh, but also how the franchise, uh, how just the game industry evolved uh, outside that space, there's opportunities for us to make uh, a, a better, a more complete experience, let's say. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm just blown away at how, how good everything looked from, from just even that small glimpse into the, into the engine. It, it feels like, you know, mm -hmm. I know you're saying it's really, really early, it's really, really early, but it's just, yeah. this is really, my goodness, what is, what is it going to look like when you wind up getting kind of further down the line? So that's really fantastic. Mm -hmm. We might keep some surprise for later, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please. So, can you please now show the stack comparison of the original 2008 game versus the current project? Yeah, that, that's a massive difference. You know, you remember your favorite game in a certain way, and you think that it looks great, but then when you see improvements, it's, it's 
Wow. Big difference. Big, big difference. Yeah, it's, it's always interesting to see just how far we've come in terms of technology, mm -hmm. right? Like we, it, it was only 13 years ago, but it seems like we've gone leaps and, leaps and bounds where we're able to kind of take you all the kind of small details you're seeing on, on the, the newer model of, of Isaac is really, is really fantastic to see. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your current goals for the remake exactly? How are you going to honor the legacy of Dead Space? Because that is huge shoes to fill. Bar is yeah, high. Well, I uh, it, it is definitely, and, and like the team is actually extremely passionate. Uh, we're, we're referencing a lot to the original game, um, uh, having a lot of looks at it, um, and like I said, by making it relevant, we're looking at different games and what they did, and see how can we bring it back inside uh, inside Dead Space. So, like one of the example is something that we're trying to do is to have an unbroken experience to make the game fully seamless and how can that create an experience where, where the players more even more immersed within the game um, that, than was previously the case and it's really one of the, the big objectives that we have for, for that game is that from even before the start screen till the end of the game the rolling credits to never have any break of experience to have that full and uninterrupted sequence shot and so that, of course, has a lot of impact mm -hmm. on, uh, on what we're building. And just starting with how the Ishimura and the structure of the game is built, because we don't want any cut. So there should be no loading. How do the full ship should be walkable from end to end, seamlessly, etc. There's a lot of elements that start to unfold when you start to think the game, uh, that lens of really unbroken emotion. And like really from, from the get-go, uh, like we, we gave ourselves an objective, like if, if possible, could we have players wanting to take the controller and play for 12 hours straight, not, never putting that down, not, not even going to the bathroom, <laughs> just because they were so immersed within the game. Uh, and, and that's what we're after. That's like the type of immersion that we want to be able to achieve. That's going to be a back-of-the-box quote. You can't go to the bathroom on the back of the box. I, I, I appreciate it. But I also heard you talk about, you know, how you want to double down on or at least really focus in on what makes Dead Space fantastic around the horror aspect of the game, too. I'd love to hear more about that. So, of course, horror, it's, uh, it's one of the, of the main pillar of, uh, of Dead Space. And it's, it's about a lot of elements in Dead Space. So, of course, the story it's about, about that. It's that iconic uh, survival or story, you're alone, trapped on, the, on that uh, hulking spaceship. But the main element for us was to get the ambience right. And so that's why we started with, uh, with elements like, for example, the Edbanger Corridor or the workshop that you can see uh, in, the, in the teaser, mm -hmm. is to make sure that we capture the ambience. It's, it's about more than just the goal or the monsters, mm -hmm. or, or the story, or the character. It's really about the Ishimura and how isolated and stressed you feel when you're inside that ship. And so that's really an important pillar for us. And so that's why we want you to be fully immersed and to never be able to pull out from, uh, from that experience. The pacing was so good. Like it was a master class in pacing, mm -hmm. the original Dead Space. Um, to keep you on the edge of your seat all the time. Uh, and that's actually something that, that we challenged the team early on. Like, How can we make sure that we don't break that recipe, that we don't break um, the right amount of nothing happening that's going to actually increase the level of tension when you're playing? Uh, and, and so far, the team's been taking that challenge and doing an amazing job at it. Uh, and, and it's always something that's at the back of our head uh, in every review that we're doing. Uh, and. and they're delivering amazing work on it. It's one of the things, it's how can we keep players constantly on their toes? And we might have some surprise coming on that. And uh, on how much you can be surprised even when you're doing something you want <laughs> It's a lot of fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what would this stream be without necromorphs? Isn't that what we are really here for? <laughs> When we say cut off their limbs, you know, we want you to experience every gory detail of dismembering iconic necromorphs. Now we will showcase our dismemberment, Jim. The dev team has created a peeling system that will be implemented into combat. Would you mind telling us more so, about the original system versus the new system and what peeling actually means? I, so, I think actually something that's very important, uh, as you can see with the feet, like it, it is definitely a gem, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's intentional that we, we showcase this in a gym. 
um, because we're so early with it. Visually, we're not at the right level of quality where we want to achieve, uh, but we want to showcase functionality here. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to talk about, and, and what is the system that we have in mind for peeling, like you said. So obviously, same thing. It's a really early build. It's a gym. Everything that you see is work in progress. It's first implementation. A lot of VFX are missing. A lot of those modelization are not final and missing a lot of things like flesh tearing, etc. Mm -hmm. But one thing that is important for us that I just show it's first, of course, dismemberment is back. And it's back uh, with all the depth and, uh, and fun you can have in that space. But one thing we wanted to, uh, and those are the only things, those, those are the things you can say only on that space. <laughs> 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 one of the, the things we wanted to improve uh, about, uh, about that experience is when you're using a weapon that is not a carving weapon, like something mm -hmm. not like the plasma cutter. Plasma cutter is really fun to use. You can just shoot at anything, and uh, really you have that instant feedback of the limb getting cut, etc. But when you had a different weapon, knowing how much damage you were dealing to the enemy, how was he reacting, etc., it was not necessarily as visceral and as clear as the as the original. Mm -hmm. And so that's the thing we are working on at the moment, and we call peeling. It's basically that body destruction technology that we're developing that is allowing us to really remove, so at the moment, the flesh out of the, the bones of the enemy and to give you a good sense not only of gore and horror and ambience, mm -hmm. but also of how much damage am I dealing to that opponent. Is my weapon actually useful against this one? How close? easy to die and that's something for me that is really interesting and so when we were speaking about why doing a remake and where can we improve those are an example of what we can do is that we don't have any more to choose which feature we actually want to push mm -hmm. we can have dismemberment we can have much more precision and body destruction we can have seamless loading for the for the wool ship etc etc and that's something really really uh, interesting uh, for us and another thing that is actually really interesting is that system so again for the moment it's really early for the moment we're only showcasing it on the on the naked slasher, so uh, you only see it with the, the flesh, but of, of course later it's gonna support like uh, the claw, body armor, different layers, weak points, etc. But it also improved one of the core of shooting in that space, which is around the precision, and not only the precision of my weapon, but as an example, the precision of the plasma cutter. And so if I was to shoot, let's say, on that leg, then if I'm shooting here, I'm not going to cut the leg because I'm not shooting at the place where the bone is actually visible. If I, need to, if I want to cut that leg now, I need to be much more careful and precise in my aiming and in the shooting. And then for us, what is interesting is that it opened a whole new layer of, uh, of shooting and combat loop where you can have some weapons that are better at carving through the enemies, some weapons that are better at cleaning them. Oh, sorry for the mic. <laughs> some <laughs> weapons that are better at cleaning, the, at cleaning the enemy and removing the flesh and the tissue, etc. And that's something really, uh, really interesting for us. Anytime uh, Roman speaks about this member, but he gets overly <laughs> passionate and expressive <laughs> about it. Uh, <laughs> even with the team internally. Uh, he shows a lot of passion in that topic, so... Yeah. I, I, I can just imagine you being on the phone and talking to somebody who's like, yeah, we need to get more body dismemberment and more destruction <laughs> on the body. And people are just like, what in the heck is he talking about? But it looks great. Sometimes, yeah, it looks amazing. Sometimes there's, there's weird moments like that in the team where you, you do a, a meeting about dismemberment and uh, blood and gore and dead bodies and... You misspell somebody's name and you're inviting somebody else to that meeting that is not part of the team and they go like, Oh no. Brace <laughs> right, yourself, strap in. <laughs> so, so Roman, on what level can we expect the detail of filleting necromorphs, essentially? How detailed are so, we talking here? In terms of the body destruction, the peeling, it's going to be really super detailed. As we can see on that video, so that's a... Uh, uh, the first, uh, first steps of that technology, if the video is playing, 
which is not, I think, at the, at the moment. Yeah. Yes, here we go. Uh, you can see that it's really super precise. It's exactly where you're aiming, where you're shooting. It's exactly respecting the shape of the, of the projectile at the enemy. Uh, if it was fire, you would see it going through the, through the, the body of your enemy and burning, uh, and burning the flesh, etc. It's the pinning, the, the, that, that uh, body destruction uh, system is going to be super precise. In terms of pure dismemberment, and then where you are able to, uh, to cut the necromorph limbs, here where we want to improve it, because we feel like characters like the slasher, for example, it was already really deep in terms of, uh, of gameplay. Like they are different behavior based on whether you were cutting uh, the legs or mm -hmm. the head, whether they go berserk, etc. So here our goal is for enemies like Slasher, it's not necessarily to improve or make or give more precision where you cut, you can cut the enemy. It's more to try to extend that fun and that depth to other enemies that tend to be a bit lighter in terms of, uh, of dismemberment and, uh, and behavior, like for example, the infector or the brute. Like I can't wait to show you uh, when you get behind the brute and you start to uh, peel his oh back God, and uh, yeah. dig for, uh, for weak points. Oh, I can't that's, wait. That's the type of improvement we're, we're going for. <laughs> get, to the, get to the weak points. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I love the peeling of the different layers of skin down to the organs and bones, especially coming from a medical background. It, it's just insane to see. Uh, the level of expectation is very much up here, and, you know, we'll hold you accountable. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that you, you might have noticed quickly in the, in the prototype, and that's something we, are, we're going, uh, we want to experience a bit more, we want to, to dig a bit more, it's when you actually cut a limb, but there's still a layer of flesh we don't always want the limb to go out and, mm -hmm. uh, and fly away. And sometimes we keep it attached by the, the layer of flesh or tendrils to the, uh, to the body. So currently that VFX is missing, but the technology mm -hmm. to keep it attached and dangling is there. And so you can grab those with, uh, with kinesis to, uh, to uh, make it a bit faster to dismember them and then you can throw them back to the opponent. So I think we'll speak a little bit more about kinesis after, but mm -hmm. that's also the, the power and, uh, and weapon synergy loop, that's also something we, we want to try to, uh, to uh, improve uh, in the Dead Space remake. Yeah, yeah. yeah by, by bringing it back, like, uh, it, it gives you an option to, we actually took back the, the impalement from Dead Space 2, so it gives you an option to actually impale your enemies that's right in front of you and using it as a projectile against your enemy. So, so it gives you more creative opportunities uh, to, to kill your enemies, really. So that, so that means that we're going to go from, we're going we're to continue to have cut off your limbs, and we're going to have dangle your limbs, too. To be, the, <laughs> be the thing that people are going to start screaming in the chat pretty soon. Um, one of the other, you know, you talked about, you know, how some of these uh, pieces of tech are, are, are adding to the improvements of, of what this remake is going to wind up being. I'd love to hear you kind of talk a little bit more about, you know, some, some other improvements that we've seen, not only in scale in terms of, you know, rooms that we've seen before. We saw the headbanger uh, room a second ago, but I want to dig into, and let's let's pull up the zero-G therapy room, which I think also showcases this kind of next layer of where you're thinking about going from an improvements perspective. Just talk a little bit about, you know, where you're kind of seeing this move. We see Isaac kind of in the space right now, floating around the space, uh, probably going to show off some of his thrusters and, and, and stuff in a minute. Uh, I'd love to hear more about, you know, kind of where you're thinking about in terms of improvements in this layer too. So for us, really, going back to the original Dead Space, it was something that uh, we felt, so again, super early build, <laughs> that we felt we could, uh, we could actually improve in terms of, uh, of experience and immersion, it's the zero-G and how you would move around uh, in zero-G. And that's something that was really good and improving the experience in Dead Space 2 and 3 that we felt was really missing in, uh, in the original Dead Space. And so that's why we, we took that mechanic of, uh, of flying around when you're in zero-G and with much more 360 degree freedom. And now you can play Dead Space and really feel you're in space during, uh, during those moments. And so also that's a mechanic that uh, we've started to, uh, to improve a bit on. Like, for example, now you can interact as, uh, as you fly around. You can go into uh, 
tighter corridors and kind of things. But also, it allows us to revisit some of the old contents and create new ways to navigate, new paths. Like here in the original, you would have gone back through that door through uh, where you came from. And here, it allows us to create new environments with eventually new challenges to surprise also the people that know the game and uh, will be like, oh, wait, what's that? What's that? <laughs> and no, we're going to surprise you. So, so it's really delivering on the fantasy of being in space, making sure that we're able uh, to use that and revisiting all the places in the game, in the original, where uh, there was Zeruji, uh, which was the Superman jump back in Dead Space 1, and now applying full 360 motion and, and finding ways to, pro to provide a real challenge uh, in those type of environment. And, and, and so far, there's been very good ideas like this one about how can we reach reverse uh, through the same environment and provide something new for the players. So, so we're definitely on the lookout for these opportunities um, when, when we revisit uh, each of these uh, gameplay sections. <laughs> Yeah, for me in the original game, that zero G jump was very disorienting. I don't know if anyone else agrees with this, but it, it made me very disoriented. So seeing quality of life improvements carried from two back into one with the thrusters and the movement is, is incredible. That's a huge improvement as is. You know, it, it's funny. Um, the community quickly recognized and deciphered the Morse code from the Ishimura in the original reveal that we had. People figured it out right away um, from the blinking flashing lights. But, you know, we didn't see any comments on the subreddit or online about the thrusters on Isaac. There right? was nothing. Where, where, <laughs> where was that? <laughs> Look alive, chat. Subtle, like... but... <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah. <laughs> but, no, it's really interesting because then also, like I was mentioning, it allows us to revisit to the to zero G areas, potentially create new ones, mm -hmm. and add a whole set of, uh, of different challenges, challenges sorry, in, uh, that were not present in Dead Space 1 that we can now create or recreate because you have all that freedom of, uh, of motion across that one big mm -hmm. ship. <laughs> yep. Uh, there was also one question and topic that was uh, prevalent throughout the community that we saw time and time again, and that is the topic of microtransactions. You know, they were apparent in Dead Space 3, so at this point, can you please be transparent and honest regarding microtransactions and you know if that will make an appearance in Dead Space 1 remake. So very, very clear, no microtransaction, none no. at all. No, not like, at all. Like I'm talking you mentioned <laughs> already in an interview, I think, yes, no, no, we don't have that in the remake. That's awesome. Good. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's good to hear. I think everybody <laughs> so in the chat and everybody in the community. On the record. Uh, yeah. It's on the yeah, record now. I hope the crowd now, is so. going wild. <laughs> that's what we want to hear, okay? That's that's two back of the box quotes that we've gotten for the stream already. That's easy, easy, <laughs> well, well, well done. Um, we, we, you know, we've talked a lot about you know the improvements, things you kind of want to transition, ways you want to improve, not only the gameplay but the, all the systems around it. But I think one of the things we haven't gotten a chance to talk to about is the how do you want to enrich the storytelling in this game as well? There's lots of different aspects to that, and I'd love to hear more thoughts about how you're trying to broaden and expand that as well. So about the, the story and narrative as a, as a broader topic in, uh, in Dead Space. First, we are not going to change the foundation of the story because that story is really iconic and it's, it's just a great, a great sci-fi horror story. It's really about being Isaac and going into that hulking spaceship and feeling alone and, isol and isolated as you try to survive all those space zombies and stuff and trying to find Nicole, trying to solve that mystery about the marker and stuff. All of those core themes of the originals, those are elements that not only we really want to continue to, uh, to have in the game, but that we want to build uh, on top of. The, the, the things that we want to enrich in terms of, uh, of story or narrative, it's really about the, the bigger universe of Dead Space. We want to have more ties with what came after, whether it's the books, whether it's the anime, whether it's Dead Space 2. We want to put back the original in a, a more, uh, uh, in a better way, if I can say, inside that broader universe. And 
There's, sometimes it can be through really soul uh, message or uh, the audio links or, or message in the environment. Sometimes it will be a bit more <laughs> and uh, we can come to that later. But also one thing we wanted to make, it's we wanted to, uh, to build a bit more on, uh, on some of the characters around, uh, around Isaac, whether it's uh, Kendra or Amon. And one thing for me that's really important in that space is as Isaac, in the story, you're looking for Nicole, but actually in game, <laughs> not so much, <laughs> as we can say. So that's something we want to improve. We want to give you the means to actually look for her and mm -hmm. more than look for her, learn what happened, what happened to her during the outbreak. That's one of the elements that, uh, that we're gonna not necessarily improve in the story, but enrich and that we want to add in the law of the game. I'm excited for that. Again, that's one of those things where, you know, the world building that you wind up doing through the, through the ship and, and through those small audio logs and you know, the way you've kind of talked about, you know, bringing up some of those, those elements into kind of a, a next layer that we will be able to get a chance to see. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just hyped to see where that's all going to land because it's just going to be so cool to see what things when you do that one-to-one -one comparison. It's like, oh, that thing got mm -hmm. changed, got added there. Um, yeah, I definitely had same questions on like my first playthrough and the many other times. It's like, what about the marker? What exactly did happen to senior medical officer Nicole Brennan? Uh, yeah. I just want more of a cohesive, you know, make us whole narrative type situation, which I like. I'm really hoping that you guys deliver on this future game. You will be one of the first to know, I think. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, count, Touché. Council, priv council privileges, <laughs> council privileges. Um, one of the other and, and, and kind of big questions that a lot of folks uh, in the community have, have been wondering about, have been thinking about, and, and hopefully you'll be able to give us a, an answer on this one is, will Isaac be voiced in this game? <laughs> Well, that's a good uh, question. Excuse me, I have something for, to say. Oh, oh what? <laughs> uh, excuse me, I have something to say. <laughs> and it's been a long time coming. Hi, I'm Gunnar Wright, and I'm excited to announce that I'm reprising my role as Isaac Clarke for the remake of Dead Space 1. I want to thank all of you for allowing me to give Isaac a voice. I can't wait to suit up, throw that rig on, and do my best to try to keep Isaac alive. Although I've got a feeling some of you might try to keep me from doing that. In the words yep. of Isaac Clark, stick around. I'm full of bad ideas. <laughs> That's what I, uh, I'm talking about. That's amazing. Gunner that will amazing. be coming back. Uh, he has to. He's Isaac. Oh my he has goodness. to. Phil he has Roman, no choice, okay? He has no choice. We, we, we made him do it. Uh, <laughs> Philip Roman, I, I, share some thoughts on, on Gunnar coming back as, as Isaac. Well, actually, it, it was one of the first things that we, we discussed with the council at the very beginning. Like, it was one of those open questions that we had. Uh, the initial Dead Space, there, there was obviously no voice for Isaac. Um, but that was changed uh, for Dead Space 2, Dead Space 3. Gunnar played an amazing part in this uh, and delivered a, a great performance to create that character. And so for us, it was really a question like, oh, should we voice him for this remake or not? Should we stay? Which is why like, we engage in that uh, conversation with all the folks on the council to try to see what, from your perspective, what was your opinion on this key topic? Uh, and what was clear was that, well, if he's back, it, it has to be Isaac. Uh, it has to be Gunner. Isaac is Gunner, uh, and, and so like we we started to have these discussions with, with casting, and it became very very clear rapidly that that for us that was the right angle to tackle this topic. Yes, for me it's so first as a fan of that space before even being on that project, it was yeah Gunner is Isaac, and revisiting that space one, uh, amazing game, and revisiting Isaac for me. We needed Isaac to be in Dead Space 1. And so that's why for me it was really important and I was so happy to, uh, to be able to, uh, to have him be Isaac in, uh, in Dead Space 1. But one thing that is really important for us, it's there is something that is key 
in the, in the dead space uh, theme and ambience, it's the isolation. You're alone. You're alone on that spaceship. You're alone facing the enemies. You're, it's really that feeling of being isolated and alone. And sometimes, hearing a voice, it fights against that. Like, you know, you're going to the basement, it's dark, and you're looking for the, for the light, and you talk to yourself because it's reassuring, especially when you're alone in the dark. And so that's something we didn't want it to break in that space. And so Isaac is only going to talk. One of the rules that we have is that Isaac is only going to talk when he's being talked to. He is going to respond. He's going to engage with Emma and he's going to engage with Kendra and so on. He's going to be part of those discussions. But then, when he's alone, when you're alone in that dark corridor, he's not going to talk. He's not going to break that immersion. He's not going to break that feeling of isolation. But one thing that was important for us, uh, for Isaac as a character, is he's not a space marine. He's a really specific type of character. Not only is Isaac, but also he's an engineer. And so we really wanted to give him more a sense of uh, being the main character of that story, give him more sense of agency on what's going on. And so when there's a new objective, when there's a discussion about how are we going to blow that barricade, how are we going to restart the, the engine of the ship, we wanted Isaac to be part of that discussion. We wanted Isaac to be part of the solution. He's the expert. He is the space engineer. And so that's why also we wanted to, uh, to give him a voice. It's we wanted to improve the character on, uh, on that perspective. So here it is. Gunnar is back. Oh, Couldn't be happier about that. <laughs> he couldn't either. Jackie, what, what, any more thoughts about Gunnar being back in the game? No, I'm just, I'm very excited. I mean, this is expected. The council very much told you guys that that is exactly what we wanted. And I'm really glad that followed through, everything came through. <laughs> Very excited. Yeah, I, I am hyped. Even though I did not get the part, it's okay, Gunnar, we will let you rock uh, as Isaac this time <laughs> around, you know, Dead Space 2 remake, I will I will be Isaac at some point. You're a close second, Khalif, close second. See, this is why I love you. I, I appreciate, see, this is, this is again, another back of the box. Uh, honest. Again, this is the reason why we do this kind of work. Um, we're, we're, we're almost out of time, but I want to give you two gents a, a little bit of time just to share, again, any last thoughts you have with the, the folks here watching the chat and, and everybody else out in, in the land who are, who are Dead Space fans right now. Yeah, well, one thing, like I said at the beginning, uh, the purpose for us to do this is, is to hear your feedback, hear your thoughts. Um, so, so hopefully we've shown a few assets. Uh, we've talked about the game. Hopefully that triggers some discussion that we're able to, to look and see uh, and, and understand what's important for the community. Um, so, so that's really the purpose for us. Um, and, and we hope that the community is going to engage uh, so that we can get that feedback back. And another important element really for us is that we've started a little bit less than a year now on that project. And we start to have some amazing things, I think, and uh, its production is just starting. And I'm incredibly amazed and proud of everything the team is doing. Like, it's one of the most amazing team I've worked with, and I want to thank them again and again for everything they're doing. And not only because I do believe it's amazing, but also because it's really difficult time for, for building all of these things in that context of the podium and for the pandemic and walking from all and all these things. And so being able to see all these assets, all those arts, the gameplay they are building in that context, I'm just like, wow, I'm blown away. Like, the team's amazing. Thank you very much, guys. It's, that was a really beautiful concept art you had on the screen there. It was uh, medical. It was stunning. I can't wait for everyone to see that in the actual game shipped. Yes. This is so oh, pretty. I want this so as a desktop good. background. <laughs> right? Seriously. I don't want to live there, but I want that as, as a piece of my, my desktop art for sure. Yeah. Uh, we can hook you up, Jackie. We can hook you up. <laughs> nice. Uh, Jackie, before we get up out of here, any last words uh, for the folks at home? No, uh, you know, I had a wonderful time, and I want to thank Motive and EA, uh, you know, for allowing Khalif and I to be a part of this wonderful community. Thank you, Roman and Phil. And, you know, also thank you all the unsung heroes, you know, on the dev team working hard to make this ship for the best possible thing, you know. So thank you so much. 
Yeah, and, I, and I'll just end out and say, again, you know, Phil and Roman and the rest of the team, uh, you all are, are putting in such great work uh, to, to bring this game back to life in a, in a fantastic way. I, as a huge fan, am extremely excited to dangle their limbs and, and do all of yeah. those things within <laughs> that game. Uh, and we hope that also our friends and our, and our, and our compadres over in the council as well, we hope we did you proud today. Uh, everybody at home who's watching the stream, make sure you go check out Dead Space Twitter account so you can get some more updates when they go live. Uh, and again, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, take care and we'll see you. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you very Bye. much. Bye.